Hey, what's up? I'm Jason. It's great to be here. I'm uh, super passionate about uh, voice over IP security. This is Arjun. <clears throat> I'm going to tell you, I'm going to start off with a quick little story, and it's the reason why I like Las Vegas so much. We were, um, we were here last month, uh, Viper spoke at SANS Pen Test Summit on voice over IP pen testing, and uh, only in Las Vegas do I get taken up onto the stage of Cirque du Soleil's humanity. And uh, little did I know that they were going to try and take off my pants. The girls. That's not a bad thing when girls want to take off your pants. But uh, lucky for me, I wasn't wearing any underwear. So I kind of escaped that part. Lucky for the audience as well. So uh, I was telling the Sands guy this story. And it was kind of funny because they, they nicknamed me Commando. And it was, uh, it was uh, uh, Paul Asadorian with Paul.com Security. I hope he's in the room. But uh, anyways, uh, Paul. So he called me Commando. So uh, I think that's going to be my new handle now, Commando. And uh, yeah, so Paul, wherever you are, um, I want you to know that uh, I'm going Commando for this talk in your in your honor. So we'll, let's get started here. We got a we got a lot of stuff to talk about. I'm going to go really fast at the beginning on. Uh, the overview of UC, and then we got three really cool demos to do. We're going to talk about like an intro to like some of this video stuff that we're talking about. And if you guys stick around to the end, the last 10 minutes, we're going to have some awesome like really cool pen testing stuff, uh, lessons learned and tricks that we learned here a few weeks ago. So um, Viper voice stands for Voice of IP Exploit Research, and really all we are is we're a highly specialized pen test firm uh, dedicated towards UC and Voice of IP. Um, we do structural research on uh, generic uh, implementation of VoIP and finding vulnerabilities in VoIP protocols, um, but it's basically penetration testing and then our research around this. We built a real production enterprise network. Um, it's basically Cisco, Avaya, and Microsoft. And what we do is we go in and we do the pen test with the customer. We learn more about the configuration. We recreate it in our lab, and then we're even more effective in our pen tests, and, and our research feeds into that. So obviously this is Arjun here, I'm Jason. Uh, we're Viper team members. Um, this is our lab actually in Dallas. And we've, like I said, we, we have a Cisco network IPS. We can do all types of VoIP exploits through the network IPS. Um, we have like Cisco of I and Microsoft phones and uh, video phones and so forth. Um, so you see definitions. Um, at first it was the first marketing buzzers was a converged convergence which was uh, voice and data over the same pipe. Um, I added that my, my definition of unified communication is just adding video into that. And we also have um, presence as well. So um, this is just a simple slide. Just like, why do we do what we're doing here? We, we're publishing these free assessment tools for education and awareness, because we believe that the only way to show people that VoIP attacks are for real is to actually demonstrate it to them. And the way you do that is you use security tools. We enable security professionals to test the network, to show the customer the risk of VoIP. And uh, we also enable like VoIP owners, like people deploying VoIP, you know, to test the network themselves so they can see the risks. Because they're really the ones that have to make the risk decision if their risk tolerance level will accept that risk. So let's, let's look at some, uh, some real world business examples. And we're talking about IP video here. So um, private IP video calling um, between users, like the CEO calling the CFO. Uh, telepresence or video conferencing, um, IP video surveillance, which we're going to take a close look at. Uh, then there's these video streaming applications, and we're really it's really interested, interesting to study these. And you know we welcome you guys to come to us if, if you've seen stuff because all this stuff is new in the market, and we're we're just now seeing this come out. Okay, so here's here's a. Uh, a business case. We're just taking a look, a quick look at you know what is driving this um, these uh, video rollouts. So you know saving money, uh, going green, not having to save on travel costs. Um, Wachovia, as a result of their tele telepresence uh, solution, um, cost cuts. And then IP video surveillance. We're kind of taking a look at these video analytics applications that. Um, you can do programmable, um, user-driven analysis automated on uh, DSPs and, and coprocessors that are on the video surveillance cameras. OK, on the IP video streaming applications, we have America's team, the Dallas Cowboys. Brand new stadium, awesome. 
And uh, we've got a lot of stuff in the press about um, the Dallas Cowboys. They have an all IP video network. It's this new Cisco Stadium Vision technology. Uh, Cisco's partnered up with the Dallas Cowboys. And supposedly every single uh, TV, IPTV, ever, the video boards and everything is all has an IP address. So what does that mean for us? A, lo a lot of fun. Um, now the Cisco Stadium Vision is like targeted revenue streams where they can like customize the whole um, view of all the, IP all the IP phones and all the IP TVs. They can customize that for whatever the event is. If it's like, in, if it's like a Cowboys game or if it's like a concert and so forth. Um, the two 60 yard long HDTV video boards are the largest in the world. Uh, Forty million dollars, they're man manufactured by Mitsubishi. Uh, Yankee Stadium is also doing this as well. Toronto Blue Jays. Okay, here, let's take a look at some, uh, some example uh, UC attacks. <clears throat> now we're looking at is the video replay attack where we can um, play, we can replay, thank you, Koo. Which, appreciate that. What's your, um, what's your blog website again? Hey, Heycoop.com, check it out, good guy. Uh, video replay, we can do a video replay against an IP video surveillance system by placing a safe video stream and creating the blind camera. And then while the bad guys are sneaking in and doing the bad stuff. Um, we can also, um, we've actually seen some people do this. Um, we can uh, record the CEO in the middle of like a conversation. Uh, we had one guy use UC Sniff to do this and he showed a C CEO that, um, that he had recorded the live uh, conversation. But you can actually replay that. So imagine if like, in the middle of an important conference call, there's like a previous conference call from two weeks ago and the, and the CEO is like saying the same thing. A little strange. Okay, um, IP video hijack. We're calling this video interception, video denial of service. So we're intercepting the video and then we're, replay we're playing whatever we want, whether it be replaying a previous like AVI or taking a random AVI clip and playing it against the uh, target video session. Uh, and then we have the video eavesdropping example that we just talked about. Okay. I want to do like an overview of UC Sniff. Now UC Sniff is our next generation VoIP sniffer. And uh, I want to walk through like what's, what the progression of UC Sniff and what's happened with UC Sniff. Um, first of all, there's no other security software that can decode G722 audio codec automatically. Um, if people try and use Wireshark and Ettercap um, when they're doing their voice sniffing in a pen test, um, you, you're limited because you can't actually reconstruct G722. This is the first security tool that, that does G, G722, which is the new codec that's uh, showing up in all the new Avaya and Cisco networks. Um, also, UC SIF, the very first, uh, we released this right after TorCon, combines a man in the middle art poisoning automatic VLAN hop and auto constructs forward and reverse into a single WAV file uh, for both G711 and G722, all of this done automatically. Um, another thing is we have a target mode that we uh, introduced and we've done this in a pen test. We can actually st intercept Unity, Cisco Unity voicemail passwords. We can steal voicemail passwords um, and we do that by intercepting the skinny keypad button messages. So the design of UC SIF is a little different because we, um, we basically combine the signaling and the media together. Um, we don't actually start eavesdropping on the RTB media until we've detected that a call has started via the signaling. So we use SCCP or a SIP to detect that that started. Um, then we close down the RTB dissector after we know that the call has ended. Uh, the result of this design is, is um, we can tell who is calling, not just random IP, IP streams. Um, we can actually, if you see the screenshot here, we can, um, we can reconstruct like who's tied into the corporate directory like the uh, CEO is calling, the, um, is calling someone else. And, and in security testing, the reason why we did this is time is money with pen testing. And I don't want to spend like a lot of time like trying to search through WAV files and so forth, trying to find what I'm looking for. So another new feature of UC Stiff, um, the very first feature with 1.0 was um, we actually mimic the entire behavior of the phone, and this is the phone on the left, to download the corporate directory, and we load it into memory of the tool. So we're actually targeting corporate uh, VoIP users based on their name or their directory entry in the, in the corporate directory. <clears throat> now UC Sif 2.0, when we released this February, is the first ever IP video sniffer. So there's no other tool out there doing that right now. 
we, we decode the uh, H.264 video codec, which Arjun's going to go into in detail. So we didn't stop there. We're going to keep on going on this. Um, April 2009, uh, we released an, another version that uh, could eavesdrop on Microsoft OCS IM conversations because um, they use the SIP subscribe message. Um, we have support now for Avaya SIP as well. We, uh, we stress tested that in our lab. Um, we've actually enhanced the art poisoning with unicast art requests. We're going to talk about that in a second. And now we have support for G711A log codec. Uh, so the gratuitous art thing is really, really, really cool stuff. Um, we actually were researching and we found that like these nice 7985 video IP phones, that we couldn't actually art poison them unless we sat there with UCSIF for 10 minutes. So we designed like unicast art requests, which actually speeds it up. Now we can do art poisoning like immediately. Uh, we just hit a button and they're art poison. Um, we found the same thing with Avaya IP phones. They actually don't advertise a feature, but you cannot uh, art poison Avaya phones at all unless you use unicast art requests. Um, but also, we ran into a problem because the unified IP phones have a GARP disabled feature, which we're going to talk about here at the end, and that really kind of stymied us in a lot of things. So UCSIF 3.0, I'm going to get into this in a second. Um, we have a GUI now, we have a Windows port, we have Windows VLAN support, thanks to Arjun. Um, we're working on a real-time video monitor where you can actually like eavesdrop live and see like both ends of the reverse and forward uh, video. Um, we actually built Cisco UCM 7.0 and 7.1 support. That was uh, not even like, uh, it didn't work at all in the old versions of UCSIF. So we're going to release this in a second. All the new deployments are 7071. And then we have GARP Disablement Bypass. I'm going to run out of time here. Uh, GARP Disabled is the feature that I was telling you about. And uh, I still have five minutes. <clears throat> OK, so, um, so GARP Disabled is basically preventing us from um, art poisoning the connection from the phone to the network. We can still do the network to the phone, but when this feature, and this is the default now in, in new deployments, so you're basically, unless the phones are on the same VLAN, we're going to get to a second how we defeated that. Um, but basically, no successful art poisoning means no man in the middle condition. And um, we can only get the uh, downstream connection coming from a remote VLAN into the phone, but we can't get any of the, we can't reconstruct the entire media, especially for the phone going to the network in a, def in a default config. So basically, basically, we devised like a new feature. And uh, what we did is we're going to beat the race condition on the phone. Because we can actually predict when, when GARP is disabled, what happens is, is the phone will send an ARP request um, as soon as the two RTP peers, right? So as soon as the phone, let's say that both phones are on the same VLAN, they're going to send an ARP request right before the RTP media starts. So we can actually, we actually program UCSIF to look for a message called start media transmission, which is basically the, the server telling the phone who the remote RTP peer is, right? So when, the, when that happens, then we know we can actually construct our own um, spoofed unicast ARP reply packet, and we can actually flood both phones. And so that's how we're winning, we're winning the race condition. We actually ARP poison the phones that way. So this is, this is the entire process here. Um, and it's the new feature. It's dash dash GARP disablement bypass. And that's going to be released with UCSIF 3.0. So but with this, though, if both phones are on the same VLAN, we can definitely reconstruct the media because we can, we can use this feature to, to beat them. But um, the phones, they're, when they, they only send the ARP requests when they boot up and talk to the server. So like when they're talking to remote peers, we can't, um, we can't defeat that right now. But that's another story. We actually can. But we're going to get into that later. <clears throat> so like I just said, we, can't, uh, we can only get unidirectional if it's remote peers in another VLAN. OK. You ready, Arjun? Hello, guys. Um, I'm going to talk about the UCSIF development and show you a demonstration of IP video eavesdropping using UCSNF. So UCSNF GUI, um, we developed it using the Juice libraries. So Juice uh, is a C++ class library for developing cross-platform applications. So it's really good for creating highly, sp highly specialized user interfaces and for handling um, graphics and sound. So it's really easy to create a GUI application using uh, the Juicer because like the Juice library has come with an uh, application called Juicer and it also has like, some sample demo applications. So uh, why we selected Juice libraries for developing the GUI? Uh, we, we needed a cross-platform C or C++ application uh, so that UCSNF GUI looks the same way in uh, Mac, Linux, and Windows. So um, we, are working, uh, we, are, we are currently working on porting UCSNF to Mac. 
So uh, UC sniff Windows port. So we ported the UC sniff Linux code uh, to Windows using uh, the MinGW. So MinGW stands for Minimalist GNU for Windows. So uh, basically, uh, it ports all the GNU GCC and the GNU bin utils for development of native Windows applications. So creating a voice VLAN interface on Windows. So actually, creating a voice VLAN interface on Linux is pretty easy and straightforward. But on Windows, uh, we have to like follow the, the, the toughest procedures by developing uh, two network drivers. So uh, we have to develop an NDIS protocol driver and an intermediate driver uh, using the Windows driver development kit. So we will be releasing these two drivers um, as a separate package along with UC Sniff. So what is NDIS? So NDIS is a Windows uh, network driver interface specification. So yeah. So um, we use the NDIS protocol driver for querying and setting the dot one queue uh, tag on the Ethernet interface. So we, we can also we also we can also use uh, the NDIS protocol driver for. Um, sending and receiving uh, raw Ethernet packets on Windows. It can be used like libnet, but, um, but it's like more programming than using libnet. So installing NDIS Prod. So we used an open source uh, tool for installing NDIS Prod. So it's called Prod Install. You can s see a screenshot of uh, NDIS Prod getting installed. So starting the NDIS Prod service. So you just need to execute net start NDIS prod. So the NDIS prod is installed as a service. So um, just start it from the Windows command prompt. So we will be like, all the steps will be automated before we officially release UC sniff. So uh, the IAM driver. So what does the IAM driver do actually? So it creates the actual virtual interface for both the wired and the wireless connection. So this virtual interface will be tagged with the voice VLAN ID, and the interface will be a part of the voice VLAN. So installing IAM driver. So we, we added the support for um, installing and uninstalling the IAM driver on the open source and this prod uh, tool. So here's the in interesting thing, uh, decoding video support on UC Sniff. So UC Sniff decodes the H.264 content from the RTP payload format. So uh, this, this decoder is compliant with the RFC uh, 3984, which is the specification for uh, the RTP payload format for H.264 video codec. So then UC Sniff creates a raw uh, H.264 file format using the decoded uh, H.264 contents. So, but this video file is only playable using uh, VLC and M player, and it does not have any audio. It's only a video only file. So uh, if, you have con if you have configured UC Sniff with the FFmpeg library support, UC Sniff uh, adds an AVI container to the video files that it creates. And it also mucks us uh, audio and video together using the FFmpeg libraries. So this AVI file can be played using any famous like, or well-known uh, media players, including uh, Windows Media Player. Here's a screenshot of the new UC Sniff GUI, just an overview. Here's a very cool animation. So here's a cool animation that shows how UC Sniff works. It's, it's pretty simple and very basic. So all you need to do is like unplug the phone from the Ethernet wall. Plug in UC Sniff. UC Sniff uses CDP. It's a Cisco discovery protocol for uh, creating a for finding the VLAN ID and for uh, creating a VLAN interface. Then it uses DHCP to get an IP address in the voice VLAN. Then it ARP scans and ARP poisons the voice VLAN. So at this point, UC Sniff is a middleman. Like it receives all the traffic from the network and forwards it to the right destination clandestinely. So for any active call that comes through, UC Sniff stores the media uh, to a media file, and then it forwards it to the right destination. This is how pretty much UC Sniff works. So uh, now I'm going to show you a demonstration of IP video eavesdropping using UC Sniff. The targets are the two Cisco 7985 phones. Let me start UC Sniff. This is UC Sniff. So I'm selecting the interface to uh, VLAN hop and to sniff the wipes, uh, wipe traffic. Which means you have to close. Remember, you net start the NDIS Pro. I would start the NDIS Pro service if I were to do that.
going to need a volunteer here in a second. I'm selecting the man in the middle mode. So there is an option to wheel and hop. So there are like three, three ways to VLAN hop by spoofing CDP or by sniffing CDP or by specifying the VLAN ID. So spoofing CDP is the fastest way to learn the VLAN ID and to VLAN hop. So I want to download the corporate directory. So in a Cisco network, uh, MAC address of the phone is an authentication token for downloading the corporate directory. So you can get the MAC address of the phone from, the, from a small label on the back of the phone or from the network configuration settings if the screen is unlocked. So I have memorized the MAC address. So there are two man in the middle modes. Uh, number one is the learning mode, and the second is the target mode. So in learning mode, you see sniff or poison all the hosts in the network, and then it eavesdrops on every phone call. But in target mode, we can target like specific users, and then eavesdrop only on phone calls to and from that user. We recommend using the target mode uh, because the network impact is really low for during penetration testing or security assessment. So Jason is going to talk more on this after the demo. So I'm enabling unicast ARP request poisoning. I'm starting UC sniff. So it has discovered the VoIP VLAN, which is 200, and it's waiting for an IP address. There you go. It has downloaded the TFTP configuration file for the MAC address specified. It has also downloaded the corporate directory. So here's the directory list. It's the same uh, as you can browse through the phone. Here's the host list. It's the active calls tab. There are no current active calls. Is the media files tab, so which shows the current media files in the current working directory. So UC Sniff has a built-in audio player. Uh, we are also working on uh, building in. Uh, we are also working on a video player as a plugin. Here's the targets list. So we need a volunteer to make a video call with Jason. Nice video conference set up. Ready? Yeah, ready. Okay. I'm gonna call you. Hello. What's up, man? Can I get a password? <laughs> no. Uh, Woo! All right. See you later. So there you go. You see, sniff us created like three, three media files. So number one is the bi-directional audio stream. Let me play that. Hello? Is it playing? It's not playing. Huh. It's playing, but it's not. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. Let's, go, let's go to the video. Yeah. Hello? Let me play the video files. Here's the forward direction video file from the calling phone to the call party. There you go. Hello. Thanks, man. Thanks, man. You know, we're going to put it up on YouTube later on tonight, so you can see yourself up there. Here's the reverse direction, a video file. I think your audio driver is messed up. It's not working. So there you have it. First video eavesdropping, you know, uh, GUI ready.
Give us one second. We're just getting back set up here so we can uh, we can jump on to the next one. So what we have here is we're going to be talking about VideoJack next. And uh, VideoJack is our like IP um, video interception and replay tool. It's like hijacking IP video. And it's basically like a cousin tool of UC Sniff. It, it, it has man in the middle um, feature supports. And uh, what, what we're using is one of our, um, we're going to be targeting unidirectional video streams. Looks like it's, it has a problem, so you're going to have to. Okay. Okay, so VideoJack was released in February 2009 with, along with the UCSIF video support. Um, it's a free assessment tool hosted on. Um, SourceForge, and you can go download it right now. But we're about to release this new version of VideoJack here right after DEF CON. Um, but it is this first security assessment tool to support H2, H.264. Even before UC SIF, we were using VideoJack all the time. Um, we first started targeting the two 7095 Cisco Unified video phones. And now we just moved into the realm of video surveillance security. So we're going to be talking about this. Um, 1080p high definition video surveillance camera, Cisco 4300 series camera. Okay. Did you reboot the surveillance camera? Let's go ahead and do that. Let's give it a second. Okay. So um, the new features of VideoJack is it can, um, it can replay an AVI, AVI file in a continuous loop. Um, it can do a targeted video DOS against uh, a random AVI file that we select, which is essentially the same attack. But we can, um, we can actually also take a raw H.264 file and replay it against the phones. So we're working on getting that going against the surveillance camera. Can you talk about this yeah, while, yeah. while I work on this? Yeah. So um, I'm just going to talk about some trivial challenges we faced while developing VideoJack. So number one is finding a valid H.264 RTP stream. It is very easy to find a H.264 uh, RTP stream uh, if we can intercept the signaling and the session being negotiated. But what happens is like um, initially the session and the signaling gets uh, negotiated like at the very beginning. And it does not happen very frequently after once the session is established. So um, particularly in the case of uh, IP video surveillance camera, so um, we cannot. You, you got it? Okay. No, no. So um, particularly in the case of IP video surveillance camera, like uh, the media, the media could be streamed to the destination like for days without having any uh, signaling taking place. So we thought like uh, how to how to find a valid media RTP stream without any signaling. So we came up uh, with a module that intelligently detects uh, a media stream just by, just by looking at the IP and the UDP parameters and the RTP version um, and the RTP payload type and the SSRC and, uh, and also the monotonically increasing sequence number and timestamp values. So uh, we, we do this like for a periodic interval of uh, 15 to 20 packets and, uh, and, if the RTP and, and if the RTP packet matches, this, matches any of the, one of the RTP stream, uh, we try to map it to a valid RTP stream. So, so here is a screenshot of uh, here's a screenshot of um, a sample capture uh, of, of a session getting established between an IP video camera and a monitoring endpoint. So here you can see uh, RTSP and STP, which uh, which exchanges the session and the codec parameters. And here is also the H.264 RTP media codec. So H.264 payload format and fragmentation. Um, there are like four types of H.264 uh, RTP payload formats. Uh, number one is the single um, network abstraction layer unit. Number two is the fragmentation unit. Uh, number three is the uh, single-time aggregate packets and multi-time aggregate packets. 
So uh, what a H.264 client does is, if the H.264 payload size exceeds the MTU, um, the payload will be fragmented at the H.264 level. So these H.264 formats are called um, FUA or FUB. But some uh, H.264 clients, like the Cisco video phones, they do not handle this FUA or FUB package. They just drop it. So uh, for a video jack attack to work successfully against this uh, 1785 phones, so uh, we automatically convert the FU type payload to a single NALU type payload. So um, and then we also fragment it at the IP level so that the so that um, it it works perfectly. So this feature of video jack uh, makes sure like video jack works against like every H.264 video client. So. VideoJack also uses the FFmpeg libraries uh, to convert the AVI and the raw H.264 file format to, to a RTP media stream. So the converted RTP media stream uh, is, will, will be initialized with the original RTP streams, SSRC, payload type, um, increased sequence and timestamp values, and spoofed source IP, and UDP port of the valid source sender. So. <clears throat> so just an overview of a video jack. It, it's 100.4. I just pinged it. You should should be able to connect to it. So we're reconnecting to the surveillance camera, and this is actually a Cisco Web um, ActiveX Control web application. And it basically streams over RTP. So this is not like HTTP that we're doing here. We're actually uh, streaming over RTP, negotiated via RTSP. Looks like we're going to come up here. It's OK. So let's just talk a quick overview of VideoJack. Um, we're selecting right now a one-way video stream that we're targeting. Um, we start the attack. And as soon as we start, we're, we're black holing uh, the, R the valid RTP packets from the uh, valid IP phone. Um, then we select the AVI or the H.264 file. And then we're using LibNet to reconstruct uh, the, the H.264 RTP packet. We use like the SSRC, the timestamp values, uh, and other values of the drop packet. So we're like, we're basically, it's a very intelligent attack. We're taking everything um, of the valid drop packet and we're recreating it, but we're putting our own custom um, H.264 payload in there. Um, the video interception, like I said, can be a replay or a random movie clip. And uh, then we target the video device and send it at the R destination RTP port. So here's a little animation to kind of show this. Um, first off, you know, on the network, we have the streams, the valid H.264 stream. The video jack attacker has to have physical access to the port. Um, now, this can be at a physically remote location, and there's a misconfiguration where the VLAN's a member of the same VLAN where the, where the video network is. Um, so once he basically does the art poisoning attack, he creates the man in the middle condition. Now the packets are going through the attacker, but the attacker is just silently forwarding this on. He's not doing anything at this point. Then when he hits the button to start the attack with whichever file he chooses, then what happens is, is he's actually dropping that packet. He's constructing his own packet, and thus the attack works that way. Okay, here's our target right up here. It's kind of hard to see right here, but it's, it's a beautiful little new 4300 series IP surveillance camera. Um, it's a 1080p high definition. We bought it from a, a Cisco video surveillance uh, reseller. It uses RTP for port negotiation. Um, it, it does support security features, like it supports encryption, SRTP. By default, it's not enabled. Um, and it supports 802.1x as well. So like I said, we're using the web application to stream, stream it over. So here's for our demo here. Now to get, get us in the mood for this. I have to play this for a second. Sure. Doctor, no, no, doctor, you might want to call the rice patty now. See that there's a nobody in it or out. Okay, so they basically took the Fabergé egg, uh, and it was, it was the type of attack that we're going to demonstrate here. Here's our Fabergé egg. 
the little water bottle over here. Okay, let's give this demo a try. Ah, uh, works. All right. Let's let's start video jack. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to capture the safe video stream. So we use UCSNF to capture the safe video stream. We're running Wireshark. So we're also going to run Wireshark and we're going to capture the into a PCAP the traffic with Wireshark. We have to sample the traffic for about 20 seconds. So we're going we're gonna to need another volunteer. So we're on this other laptop, on the attacker laptop, we're capturing this. So this is like a real surveillance camera here. It's watching the Fabergé egg right over there. You get it? Okay, let's, let's stop it. Okay, so UCSF has finished its work. Let's hope that we, we captured a good video stream. Blot up, peek out. Okay, Arjun saved off. Um, we're video jack teammates here. We saved off blah.pcap. So right now I'm going to create, I'm going to use a tool called Video Snarf, which is a new tool that we're introducing that basically takes as input an offline PCAP and it basically detects all the video and audio streams and uh, outputs them into separate files. So if you're like a network administrator or and you're, you have a monitor span session and you want to actually see all the video and audio going, you can use Video Snarf, and we're going to release this in a little bit too. Also, you can use like Ettercap and Wireshark. If you don't want to use UCSIF, you can use Video Snarf, Ettercap, and Wireshark. Okay, so we've detected a couple streams here. Now we're using FFmpeg to convert the H.264 raw file into an AVI file. So can I get like a volunteer? Let's try and get a girl this time. Any, any girls? Anyone? Anyone? Oh, we do have a girl. She's coming up. All right. Round of applause. Okay, you're going to be like the person stealing the egg. Say so we're. Don't do anything until we tell you exactly what to do. So go, go right over here. So FFmpeg is doing its work. And we're ready to start the video jack attack. OK, um, so why don't you like put your hand like here and just like show that um, put it in the water. See, now you can see her hand. You can see that like a video surveillance camera would like capture that. So move your hand out. Okay, now move, move out a little bit. There you go. Okay. So video jack has detected the stream. Um, we select other. We're going to do a looping attack. And we're going to select replay.avi. Now watch the screen here. I don't know if you guys noticed anything. Maybe for a split second there, there was a problem with the AVI file. But now go ahead and reach in and take the water bottle. Nothing. Let's stop the attack. Whoa. Water bottle's, water bottle's gone. Um, let's try it one more time. So put the water bottle back. OK. Replay.avi. Since the water bottle was almost pushed in the same direction. Now remove the water bottle and keep it out. Now watch. Stop the attack. Water bottle gone. Okay. There's Video Jack. Thank you. Actually, you can have the water bottle as a, as a present. Okay. Go ahead, Arjun. So th here's the last demo. Uh, I'm going to show a Video Jack attack 
by playing a movie clip on an active video conversation against the Cisco 7985 video phones. I'm going to use video jack. This time I'm going to VLAN hop. I'm enabling unicast ARP request poisoning. So yeah, it's ready to go. Let me make a video call. So I press F to find an active video stream. So I find one from the extension 8000 to the extension 8001. I select the video stream. Now I can do a very precision attack by attacking either one of the two phones. I'm going to attack the phone uh, with the extension 8000. 8, it's the phone on the left. So it's a 7985 model. I'm just going to do a one time attack. I'm playing the movie clip, uh, Italian Job. There you go. <laughs> I'm stopping it. So I'm going to target the next extension. So it, it, it's 8001. It's the same procedure. There you go. So I, I could have played like a pre-recorded video conversation, a pre-recorded H.264 video file, or any dirty movie, or an active video conversation. It's funny when you say dirty movie. <laughs> Thanks, man. So imagine the, the impact of this at like a, I mean, basically you have to monetize this attack, and I don't believe attackers attack for, for no good reason other than graffiti, but you could do this at like an entertainment venue, like a very high profile event. Okay, so let's, uh, let's jump on to the end here with the exciting VoIP pen testing lessons learned. Okay, so um, I've been using UCSIF this way, doing on-site pen testing for a while, and it's something I've been meaning to tell a lot of people. Um, I never run UCSIF in learning mode. I always run it in target mode. And one of the problems you run into is like, when you're doing the pen test, you wanna target like a remote, R remote IP phone, but you really don't know the IP address of the phone. So what you can do is, is you can take a hub in the environment where you're doing your pen testing, and you can share the hub with the attacker's laptop, and you can pick up and find any user in the corporate directory and you basically call that user, and then you use Wireshark on, uh, attached to the hub, and you find the IP address of the remote phone, right? It's not something you really think of, but it's very effective, because normally when you're plugged into the Ethernet switch port, you really, there's really not a way you can find the remote IP phone, unless you kind of finagle yourself like this way. So I find the IP address, and I create this file targets.txt on the phone, uh, within UCSF working directory. And then I specify UCSIF in targeted user mode. And what it does is we select from a menu, we select the user, UCSIF takes care of the front end for you. And now it's extremely uh, low risk of service impact because all we're doing is targeting the traffic between that phone and the rest of the network. So if something crashes, it's, only a f it's not gonna impact the uh, rest of all the IP phones on the network. So it's a very silent, effective attack and, and this is the way I recommend it. So it's kind of like a little tips and tricks that we learn uh, running UCSIF. Okay, now this is really, really cool. This is like I'm saving the best for the last. How much time do we have? Okay, so we were engaged and uh, there was a Viper security consultant that was in Europe um, just a couple weeks ago. And uh, basically they had, it was a UCM 7.1 brand new deployment. They had gratuitous ARP disabled. Um, now I've actually talked to Cisco PCERT about this. I've already like communicated this. This is not something that's, um, that can't be protected against. So it's something that can be remediated by just turning on uh, security features. But we couldn't intercept skinny keypad messages and they had the GARP disabled feature on. So the GARP disabled looks exactly like this. Perfect. GARP disabled was no. And I talked about this before what this means. Um, this means I can't get the, uh, any messages from the phone to the network. So I can't get the media from the phone to the network and I can't get anything, anything that the user dials. Like, and it's really nice to be able to steal voicemail passwords. <clears throat> so what did we know? 
we had to figure out a way to, to defeat this. We knew that GARP enabled is a setting that's managed server side. We also knew that the Cisco Unified Phone downloads the configuration file via TFTP, which tells the high P phone how to configure itself. So basically, this configuration file was everything that the phone used that it parses and it learns how to configure itself. Um, so, and it's only boot, and it's only downloaded when the phone boots up. Could there be a way for us to force this IP phone to download this configuration file? This is what we figured out. We figured out a method to do this with UC stuff. We call it the TFTP man in the middle modification attack. What we do is, is we immediately start, we target the phone, um, we create targets.txt, we launch UC SIF with the new feature that we created for UC SIF, which we're about to release. Um, first off, what we do is we drop keep alive act messages. Now, this is a heartbeat mechanism between the phone to the server, but we can't intercept what's from the phone to the network, but we can intercept the return traffic back to the phone. So we start blocking the keep alive act message, right, from the server to the phone, no matter where the server is. Um, now, all of a sudden, what the phone will do is it'll think that it's lost registration, so it'll try and re-register to the server. When it does this, it actually does a TFTP get for its configuration file. Well, guess what? When it does a TFTP get, the return traffic, we can add, an RT, we can add a TFTP dissector, okay? So we capture the UDP stream on the way back, and all we do is look for and intercept that gratuitous ARP setting. So we take it from whatever its setting is, one, and we change that to zero, to GARP enable. So then UCSIF does its work. And finish Cisco, the phone downloads, finished parsing the file, and now it has the new configuration. GARP enabled, yes. So this all happens in less than 30 seconds. Um, if users watching the phone, they might be able to catch it, but they might not think anything of it. And all you have to do is, is wait until the users go home for the day, and you target each phone, pick it off one by one, and you, um, when they apply, arrive for work the next morning, they have gratuitous ARP enabled on all the phones in the environment. Um, we can add new features onto this um, when we come up with new ideas. Uh, so we basically pwn the phone. We can change anything on the phone we want to. I'm going to show, a qu and like I said, you can totally remediate this following Cisco security best practices. Now I'm going to show one little quick video of this actual attack. Oh, it just started actually. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to the phone right now, and, I, and I I'm finding its IP address, 200.6, and then I'm going to its device configuration, and gratuitous ARP is no. We're just verifying that on the phone. And then we go to UC SNF, and we launch with the new feature. We select the targeted phone, UC SIF ARP scans, it's VLAN hopped. Now it's listening for traffic, it's lis listening for that drop, for that keep alive act message. It's the most important part of the con. So it takes a second here. It's cool, man. See, dropping the keep alive act, all of a sudden the phone loses registration on the left. Now the phone is actually like going out via TFTP and getting the new configuration file. We're going to intercept the return traffic from the server, the SERD file coming from the server to the IP phone. In a couple seconds here, it's going to watch the phone. It's going to turn. And we just, on the right, just modified the, the setting. Now we go into the phone. It's re-registered. and new configuration, gratuitous ARP enable. I guess that's really it. Uh, great time being here, thanks for everything. And we'll be in the Q&A room. It's room 104. We'll be there for about 20 minutes.